general impression about PCB design is placing components and completing circuit by interconnecting them. But in practice, it is much more. In making of PCB, different aspects are involved. It may be a single person carrying out the thinking process or a group. Design is an iterative process. Iterative means the satisfactory solution may not be arrived at first thought process. It may have to be repeated to get an appropriate solution. PCB design involves coordination among electronics design, management, and industrial design. Generally, electronics design department is responsible for all PCB related activities. It coordinates all activities. Provides information to others, helping them to take decisions. Electronics design finalizes circuits and gives inputs to industrial design. Inputs about required area, heavy components, heat dissipating components, connector types, and other relevant ones. Management decides product price. It has a significant impact on PCB type selection. Industrial design decides physical parameters of a PCB. PCB layout could be in-house or outsourced. It gets all information about PCB from electronics design. Based on this information, PCB layout generates inputs required to manufacture a PCB. PCB fabrication is rarely done in-house. It is supplied by a PCB manufacturer. All information is to be transferred correctly to PCB manufacturer. PCB assembly can be an in-house or an outsourced activity. All these aspects are discussed in this course. At the end of the course, one knows the complete process. Interlinking of activities. Inputs and outputs of activities in terms of information and material. Before we move on to actual PCB design, let us understand some concepts of design. First one, DFM, that is designing for manufacturability. DFM is defined as a practice of designing products, keeping manufacturing in mind. Designers should be aware of various manufacturing processes and techniques, along with their limits and capabilities. For example, for a large PCB, the selected vendor should have machinery to handle large size. For PCB with large component count, PCB assembly and soldering machine should handle large component count and size. Designer must keep in mind ease of assembly, size, and hence placement of components. A very small track, width and distance between tracks, can be achieved on paper, but it must be ensured whether the selected vendor can fabricate such a PCB. Next term is DFT, Design for Testability. Testability defines the ability to test a manufactured PCB quickly, accurately. Testing is required at different stages. Such as, assembled PCB, PCB as a part of module, as a final product. It is also required during servicing and maintenance. Design for testability implies easy access to test points for connecting test equipments. Test process is finalized during PCB design. Appropriate test points are brought to proper locations and connected. PCB is a part of a product. It is a sub-assembly. Depending on product, it fits into an enclosure. Or slides into a rack. Products dimensions give space available and hence PCB size. Industrial design takes into account circuit diagram of PCB in size and packages of the components. It finalizes product dimensions. It also finalizes PCB size and mounting mechanism. It will also finalize wiring of the product, and in turn, decides locations of connectors on PCB. Available space also defines areas on PCB where large components like heat sinks, transformers can be mounted. Based on these inputs PCB design involves selecting a PCB. 
Selecting a PCB means deciding laminate type, thicknesses of substrate and copper, single-sided or double-sided or multi-layer. A major criterion for PCB selection is the estimated PCB price. Consider PCB application and physical, chemical, thermal, electrical properties of PCB laminate. Then decide PCB laminate type and thicknesses of copper and substrates to suit the application. As a thumb rule, glass epoxy laminate is used in industrial application. Paper phenolic laminate is used in consumer goods. Flexible PCBs and other types are used in special application. Let us cover some basics to understand importance of track width. Resistance is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area. As can be seen in figure, resistance is lesser for a small length of conductor and increases as the length of the track is increasing. Similarly, as area increases, resistance decreases and vice. As higher current flows, heat is generated. With the same dimension such heat cannot be sustained. Track starts getting hot. Finally the track might get cut. For PCB design, track width is an important parameter. For circuits with currents in amperes, if the width of the track is insufficient, there is a danger of overheating, or even possible fusing of the track itself. The basic rule is, higher the current to be carried, greater the cross-sectional area required. To reduce the width of tracks, higher thickness of copper can be used. This is explained with the graphs shown. The first graph shows cross-sectional area on x-axis in millimeter square and shows current in amperes on y-axis. The solid curves are showing rise in temperature due to overcurrent. The graph below, this is showing conductor width in millimeters on y-axis. It shows a solid line for 35 micrometer track thickness and dotted lines for 17.5, 70, and 105 micrometer track thicknesses. Consider, the allowable rise in temperature will be 75 degrees and operational current to be 12 amperes. Now, to accommodate this heat, if 35 micron track thickness is used, the conductor width has to be around 2.5 millimeter. Or, if, there is limitation of conductor width, 70 micron track thickness can be used, and 1.5 millimeter conductor width can be used. Distance between tracks is important, at higher voltages, hundreds of volts and above. More the distance between the tracks, the voltage that can withstand. While finding distance between tracks to withstand certain voltage, height above sea level, protective coating is also considered. One of the standards giving track spacing requirements is explained here. The grass plot conductor spacing in millimeters on x-axis and voltage in volts on y-axis. The graph on left hand side shows spacing requirements below 10,000 feet. And on the right hand side graph gives spacing above 10,000 feet. With protective coating for 400 volts below 10,000 feet, the spacing requirement is 1.6 millimeters. Without protective coating for 400 volts above 10,000 feet, the spacing requirement is 12.6 millimeters. Track width and spacing between the tracks can be specified by studying these two graphs.
the component leads to be soldered will determine the hole size. Depending on hole size appropriate pad size is selected. In case of small pad size the pad will be broken when a hole is drilled in it. Pad size is also a function of the accuracy of the PCB manufacturer's drilling machinery. Location of drill holes is a critical parameter and must consider the tolerances required. The component leads, heat sinks that are to be soldered, will determine the hole size. If a drill hole is off-centered, the pad may be broken at one edge, possibly leading to an electrical open in the circuit. Badly aligned drills can cause component insertion problems. For PTH boards hole sizes become critical if pad size is not correctly specified. As a simple rule of thumb, the pad should be at least 1.8 times the diameter of the hole, or at least 0.5 mm larger. Solder coat or plating is typically applied to all component location points on a PCB. This is done to ensure a good solder joint during the component assembly stage. For bare copper areas such as the tracks, solder mask is applied to provide protection and insulation. Generally it is green in color. High density circuit boards require very tight control over the position and dimensional accuracy of the solder mask. To reduce contact resistance gold plating can be used. Silk screen print serves as a visual guide during assembly, testing, fault finding, servicing its other information such as connector names, signal names, jumpers and any other relevant information can be printed using silk screen. All such board markings must be legible. They must be able to withstand all manufacturing processes and environmental conditions to which they are exposed. They must also be visible after all parts are assembled. Consider an application where product has. For a low priced application, where there is not much constraint on size and component count is low, but current is highest 10 amperes, the first choice is paper phenolic laminate which is single sided, 35 micron width of copper thickness. For 10 ampere current with 35 micron copper thickness, width of copper track is 2.5 millimeters. Now with this selection of PCB, if size is too big to be handled by the PCB vendor, then the second choice can be to go for 70 micron copper thickness. As another example consider a high price application where there is high constraint on size, a product like digital camera current is up to 1 ampere. In such application the first choice will be glass epoxy laminate and multi-layer PCB. If still it can't be accommodated, in given size constraints the second choice is flexible PCB. 